Our purpose here is to talk about a stitch that I developed to join two pieces of cloth end to end with a flat seam and no overlap. But in order to talk about that, I have to lay all the foundation for the people who don't know any of the other stitches that this is related to and just people that that might interest. So if that's all that you're really here for, go ahead and skip ahead because we're going to be a while. All right, first of the things that I have to talk about in order to get there is the blanket stitch. The blanket stitch is used for edging to keep cloth from unraveling without folding it over and stitching it down to make a hem. Diving right in, needle through the face, and then back out the way that you came to make a little loop up at the top there. Draw out yourself some slack because you're not going to be able to do this later, and then go through the face to create the foundation. This first stitch is just to get the thread to come from the edge of the cloth. Come through the back there and pay close attention to the placement of the needle here because you're, this is something that you need to repeat in order to make a proper blanket stitch. You have to come through the bite from the same side that the needle emerged from. Otherwise you're doing something else, which I'll get to in a little bit. It's also important to maintain tension as you're doing this, otherwise your blanket stitch is going to be really loose and it's not really going to help you protect against fraying all that much. And from here it's just a matter of repeating. The drawback to the blanket stitch is that if there's a cut in it anywhere, the entire thing is going to come apart. So what I like to use instead is the buttonhole stitch, which will only break for that one little segment. The start is almost entirely identical. Instead of coming through the face, you go through the back and up the leading edge before pulling that tight. Now you don't have to maintain tension on this one like the blanket stitch because this one, the buttonhole will pretty much take care of itself. And here's the same thing from another angle showing the direction that we're coming from. And from here you can just repeat. In order to close this off and make it incredibly durable, put a bunch of really small buttonhole stitches really close together. This is called tack. If you were to do the same thing back on the spine of the previous stitch, this is called bar tack. I, I, I tend to mix and match. The problem with the buttonhole stitch is that the side that you're drawing the line from to, to tighten down the knot frequently jams because it's coming from the working side of the spine and not from the standing side. So if you're not careful dressing it, it's liable to jam up on you and seize a bunch of little loops in that knot. Then you're going to have to cut it and that wastes unnecessary thread. What I like to do instead is related to the buttonhole stitch, but I don't think it has a proper name. I've, I've been calling it the button lock. As with all of the edges, you start like normal, and when you come through the back this time, you have to come from the trailing side of the loop. This changes the chirality of the knot that you make. The short version is that this this big long piece right here that normally has the entire body of your thread is what's going to adjust down, and it doesn't have to move the knot as it does this. The other way that I tend to do this is by just putting the needle through and grabbing the thread and wrap it around the, the needle this way as it emerges through the cloth before I pull the needle through. This can be a lot faster because that way you're using two hands to do your work. The knot will adjust eventually. It doesn't have nearly as far to go and it, doesn't, it isn't going to get tripped up on loops. And from here you can repeat it all the way around and seal it in bar tack or whatever you want to do. Anyway, the first of these two ooh, techniques I saw in a colonial style shirt and the name on it is an open work seam. I really like this idea. You can find the link to where I learned it down in the description. You start with your two pieces of cloth that have already been edged and a third piece of thread. Tack that down, make it stable, and pass it along the diagonal to bind the corners of each ditch together. From here it will corkscrew around the edgings to bind the cloth together. You should probably throw a few knots in here every once in a while so that as you're going, if it gets if it gets cut or damaged at any point, it's not going to completely unravel. Now we finally get to the reason that I made this video in the first place, the flat seam. You don't have to do any kind of edging in advance. Get two pieces of cloth re with relatively clean edges, or not as the case may be. I've used this to repair tears uh, a couple times. Anyway. What we're doing here is based on the blanket stitch, just as though it were done in two pieces and unfolded with an extra little trick in the middle. I don't you know, it's easier just to show you. Okay, this time we're coming through the face of the cloth, not through the back. 
because that makes it much easier to see. And emerge through the face of the cloth on the other side, but make sure that you weave through the thread on the way over. Pull all of your thread through, and now here's the tricky bit. Pay very close attention to the way the needle is moving through the stitch here to finish it down. I have best results when I put the needle through and draw a little bit of thread first, then take the thread that's coming out of the upper cloth and adjust coming out of the face before tightening down the entire rest of the stitch. Otherwise, maintaining tension is kind of convoluted and it doesn't tighten down properly. You're going to have to play with it in order to get it to work. Anyway, uh, this is not... Well, it may not be the best for working in every kind of cloth. Someone I know made the observation that it would be absolutely perfect for joining leather. Anyway, that's it for this. Videos that I do in the future probably aren't going to utilize this kind of visuals, but for sewing and the ca kind of camera setup that I have, there really isn't a clearer way to do it than this. So thank you to Mask for providing our visuals.